Howdy folks, Dr. Rob with Paragon Performance Physical Therapy here. How you doing? Apologies for the voice. Actually, I'm not gonna apologize. It's just kind of what happens when you live your life. Uh, I was spending some time with my nephews and nieces. Most of them are quite young and young kids are vectors for the plague. So of course they got me sick. Um, and they've graced my immune system with a challenge to overcome and to become more resilient and robust. Thanks kids, I appreciate it. Today I have a video from the past. This video is gonna be about kettlebells, why kettlebells are good. You can use them to address pain, you can use them to address cardiovascular concerns, you can use them to improve your VO2 max and your strength and your power and your explosiveness, just like anything else. I think it's one of the first videos that I actually made. One of my major goals with this channel is to demystify and to demedicalize. So this video here is my demystification of the applications and benefits of using a kettlebell. So without further ado, here's the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rob. And welcome back to the Savage Body. Today I want to talk about what the research says about kettlebells. Do they improve strength, power? Can you use them to train cardio? Do they help with pain? We're going to go over the research and we're going to see. We're going to see what it says. Let's get cracking. Otto et al. touched on this in a study in 2012 entitled The Effects of Weightlifting Versus Kettlebell Training on Vertical Jump Strength and Body Composition. So they took 30 men, split them in half, split them in half into two groups, not like in the movie Ghost Ship. They had each of them train twice a week for six weeks. One group they had trained with kettlebells, the other group they had trained with Olympic weightlifting exercises. The kettlebell group used a 16 kilogram kettlebell. They did four sets of six kettlebell swings, four sets of four accelerated swings, and four sets of six goblet squats. The Olympic weightlifting group did four sets of six high pulls, four sets of four power cleans, four sets of six back squats. At the end of the six weeks, they tested the athletes for maximal back squat, maximal power clean, and maximal vertical jump. Guess what they found? Well, they found that Olympic weightlifting induced significantly greater improvements in back squat, power clean, and vertical jump compared to the kettlebell training group. Which makes perfect sense considering that the kettlebells only weighed 16 kilograms, and the Olympic weightlifting group had weights that were appropriately calibrated to whatever their one rep max was, or their six rep max, or their four rep max. Go figure that properly loaded, heavy power lifting exercises are gonna make you more powerful and stronger and explosive than dinky 16 kilogram kettlebell swings. Huh, never would've guessed. <laughs> Come on! Mullet et al. in 2013 performed a similar study and they found that heavier explosive exercises make you more explosive than lighter explosive exercises. We already knew that was gonna happen. But what's good about this is that the kettlebell training groups still showed improvements in strength and power and vertical jump. And these results were repeated more or less again in 2013 by Minokia, and they found these exercises can be used to improve anything from clean and jerk to bench press. So what we're talking about there is transfers, the transfer of training from one thing to another. Kettlebell training can improve your bench press. Cool. Okay, so we know you can use kettlebells to train strength and power, but what about cardio? Can you train cardio with kettlebells? Ah! So there's a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research in 2015 entitled Effects of Kettlebell Training on Aerobic Capacity. So what they did is they took 17 college level female soccer players and then they split them up into two groups. The kettlebell group used a 12 kilogram kettlebell, which is about 18% of the athlete's mass to perform a VO2 max training protocol. This protocol was 20 minutes long and it consisted entirely of single arm kettlebell snatches at max speed. They would do 15 seconds on and then they would Rest. And then they would switch arms and do another 15 seconds and then rest and then switch arms and do another 15 seconds and then rest So on and so forth until 20 minutes was up the control group also did a 20 minute workout But theirs was a traditional circuit training workout They would do 20 ball squats 20 sit-ups 10 windmills 10 jumping jacks and then run 400 meters as fast as they could That would take two minutes and they would rest two minutes and they would repeat that until the 20 minute workout was over Both groups worked out three times a week for four weeks and at the end when they tested them they found the kettlebell group had improved their VO2 max by 6% and the circuit training group hadn't improved their VO2 max at all. Now, I don't like this study. This is not a study about kettlebells. This is a study about work-rest ratios. If you do 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off, 
for 20 minutes, is that a better way of improving your VO2 max than two minutes on, two minutes off for 20 minutes? And the answer is yes. If they were to swap any other full body exercise out for the kettlebell snatches, I guarantee they'd have gotten almost identical results. As much as I don't like this study, what I do like about this study is it lays out for us a very, very clear pathway for improving our VO2 max using just a kettlebell. And a single exercise too. This is a 20 minute workout, three days a week for four weeks and your VO2 max is gonna go up 6%. And that's in a trained college athlete. That's in a trained college soccer player. What's your average Joe gonna get? Probably more. So we know that kettlebells can be used for strength, power, and cardio. What about pain? What role could kettlebells play in an injured population or a rehabilitation population? So in 2011, there was a study by Jay et al., a Scandinavian study entitled Kettlebell Training for Musculoskeletal and Cardiovascular Health. They took 40 adults, they split them in half into two groups, not like in Kung Fury, and gave one group kettlebell exercises and the other group they gave nothing. The kettlebell workout was three times a week for eight weeks, 20 minutes per workout, and included five to 10 minutes of dynamic sports specific warm up, followed by 10 to 15 minutes of kettlebell exercises. And the kettlebell exercises were 10 intervals of 30 seconds of work followed by 60 seconds rest in the first four weeks, and then 30 seconds of work followed by 30 seconds rest in the second group of four weeks. The exercises themselves were progressed by the patient according to comfort and competence, starting with an unweighted swing, moving on to a kettlebell deadlift, moving on to a two-handed swing, moving on to a single-handed swing. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And the results? Pain in the neck, shoulders, and low back decreased significantly. Strength in the trunk extensors improved considerably. Trunk flexor strength, shoulder strength, and cardiovascular fitness didn't improve at all. So what does this mean aside from the obvious? What it means is that loaded ballistic kettlebell exercises can not only be safe, but effective for people that have chronic neck and shoulder and low back pain, and that it'll reduce their pain and improve their independence. I love that. It's such good medicine. So based on everything that we've talked about so far, what is the research saying about kettlebells? If we boil it down, kettlebells are a versatile and effective training tool for people with limited space or budget to improve their strength, power, cardiovascular fitness, and pain. Kettlebells follow all the exact same rules of any other form of exercise. As such, benefits to be gained from kettlebell training are primarily dependent on program design and progressive overload. Kettlebells ain't magic. I like them. I think they're really cool, but they're just chunks of metal. That's it. Anyway, folks, that's all I got. Enlighten the mind, elevate the spirit, make savage the body. Hello, this is Rob. Hey, Rob. Oh, sweet Rob. I just saw that you need to take a perm job. I'm sorry. What is this? Uh, this is Nick with RPG Medical. I was going through my notes. I just did. I wrote down that you took a perm job in uh, Washington as a physical therapist. That I took a permanent job in Washington? That's what it says. Yeah, that was, that was almost a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> No, they are not. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, are you, are you still a physical therapist? Yes, I am. You are awesome. Do you have your own practice yet? Uh, that's currently what I'm, I'm in that phase. That's what I'm building right now. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, thank you.